we, here we have uh, really the uh, old at the start of radios. We have uh, um, crystal sets that uh, the older generation would know. Uh, you had a piece of different minerals uh, that you could use uh, to reconvert the signal back into sound. And it was uh, quite easily to be seen here. You had to use this little uh, piece of wire and find a place on the, on the crystal that uh, done the, the job. And all you needed was an aerial and an earth and you had uh, a cheap radio. Uh, they came in all shapes and sizes. Very simple. This is a was a handmade one. Very few components. So it was cheap. It was the we said that every the, the poor man's uh, poor man's radio. I have uh, quite a lot. I have maybe about sixty of them. I have here a very interesting one. You had, you needed uh, headphones, of course, to listen to the sound. But this one, this clever German, he built the crystal radio into one side of the earphones. Uh, and so you, th this was just the aerial and the earth. And uh, coming back here, a very interesting uh, radio. Uh, Colonel George R. Smith. He was a, a, a German, uh, an American general that came to Germany at the end of the Second World War with the uh, with the American army. And how did you get your hands on that? Uh, 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 somebody that had inherited it somewhere or another from the Colonel Smith uh, sold it to me, and. Uh, that's a, a Zenith. It's a, a special. You can see with the aircraft on it. It was a special radio for aircraft and uh, for shortwave. Yeah. We're surrounded by so much history, aren't we? Every radio has a story connected. Every to radio it. has a has a story. A lot of radios that have uh, in Germany was popular. They made them themselves. Sometimes uh, uh, very nice that I liked that were simple. Yeah, you know, you just, to tune it in, you move the two coils apart. And this was the, the, the crystal, and then you moved it a bit around, and it was easy. Yeah, it was a cheap. And I find uh, what I liked that uh, was like the cars, that uh, they were all different. Every, you recognized if it was a telefunken. They call this telefunken, they call it the cat's head because they think that this piece looks like a, a, a cat's head. And these are very early generation valves. This is a valve from 1917. So it would be one of the very first valves that was ever made. I mean, this is really, I mean, if you, it's, it's cast iron. It's really made to survive a, 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 a small explosion or uh, um, um, uh, if the ship was attacked or something like that. And it's really solid uh, uh, um, German. And what what was the radio used for? Was it just communications or Com port? Communications, communications. So, uh, 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 listening, of course, to the... Uh, the enemy and for communications to the to the home base taking getting new orders getting uh, oh God, heavy steel uh, it's about I'd imagine it's about 40 kilos yeah so this is a, a telephone that has it that would be used for places that were in danger of explosives if there were gas or something that could explode and it's terribly heavy you could I think you could kill somebody with it it's uh, the 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 this piece would be about a kilo in weight and then you had another for the other ear that you were able to in case you didn't hear him yeah 
So they use them like down the mines where they got, any... was it would be one of the big places that were used in the mines. Sure, yeah, yeah. And it's completely encased in heavy yeah. steel, so yeah, no spark or anything. Yeah, very, very heavy. Yeah, yeah. And where did you get that one? Uh, I got that. That came from Holland. Oh, I bought. I, I I bought that in Emmen, in the north of Holland. And that's the name. That's the German name of Arbeitsfront Empfänger. Tell me about uh, this radio here with the swats on it. Uh, that was a radio would have been used in uh, factories, in colleges, big buildings. It uh, was used for public address, for you know, for big groups. It would be a, had a, a strong amplifier valve in it and a, a propaganda radio. Propaganda radio, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. These are two pieces that I particularly like because they have not only an Irish connection, they have a Kerry connection as well. I found this key years ago in, in I think it was in Artfert somewhere, and it had the Atlantic College on it, but I didn't know where that was. And this was pre-Google, so I had to look through magazines, and I was pleasantly surprised to find this advertisement from the wireless capital of Ireland, which was in Karasavien, and the name the Atlantic College. So that was a key from the Atlantic College in Karasavien. This is from a submarine. This is a, a Swiss army. These were two radios made uh, by the East German army. This is a, a, a radio that has German, some of the German radios have names. They call this the ice skate, the Schlitt shoe because of the, of the design. It's a, a popular collector's item because of what it looks like. And uh, here is a very interesting radio. It was built by the German espionage. They built it with parts that came in through Portugal from America. Uh, there are very few of these radios in existence. There were maybe 20 made. There's about five still to be found, and I have two. These are the original headphones. So your grandfather would have been wearing those headphones? He might have been wearing them headphones, yeah. And uh, they all had a stamp from the BBC in England, all the, the, the English or the Irish radios that had to be licensed from the BBC. This is a, a, a super phone from, Sch from the Schaub uh, 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 company from Stuttgart. Uh, would be, have been built about 1950-51 and cost that time more than a Mercedes car. It cost that time about 1,700 marks, which was a lot of money that time. A normal uh, worker would have been earning you know, maybe 200 a month. So it was more than a year's wages. And it has been completely restored. Um, it takes, like all the old valve radios, it takes quite a while to uh, heat up. And a feature of these old radios was the nice magic eye for tuning. And uh, the, special, the special thing of this, I don't know if you can even see it. It's a recorder. It was one of the first things that you could record, actually, the radio program. And it was a, a tape recorder, but on wire, on this very thin wire. And you'll, you'll be surprised to hear the, the, the quality of the the sound of this. So that's playing off a wire, not a tape, not a disc. Yeah. I 
mean, I, I think it's comparable. See the war. Yeah? And the beauty of it for me is that often the recordings were from the radio programs of that time. And if it breaks, you just put a knot in it and uh, it works. Yeah?